Hi everyone, I'm Shane. And I'm Emma. Have you ever heard those acronyms that all sound similar like TFSA, RSP, and RSP? These are all different types of investment accounts. And today, we're gonna break down what they mean and how they're used. It's hard to know which types of accounts you should use for your investments and which accounts may be more suitable based on your current situation. It can be a lot at first, but why don't we break it down? Let's start with a tax-free savings account, or TFSA. A TFSA can be opened by any Canadian resident with a social insurance number who's reached the age of majority in their province. All TFSA contributions are non-tax deductible, meaning that they do not reduce the amount of income that you'll pay taxes on, but your savings grow tax-free. All withdrawals are also tax-free and can be made at any time. Sounds like with the TFSA, you can save and invest money, and any interest, dividends, or capital gains you earn are completely tax-free. That's why the account is called Tax-Free Savings Account. Exactly. Also, as of 2024, you can contribute up to $7,000 a year, and you do not need to worry about contributing that all at once. Unused contribution room can be carried forward into future years. This account is very flexible and can be used for various savings goals, making it a great choice for your first investment account. Once you've reached the maximum contribution limit, you can move on to other account types, like a Registered Retirement Savings Plan, or RSP. On that note, let's talk about RSP accounts. They're meant for investors to start accumulating savings for later in the future, most commonly for retirement. Unlike the TFSA, the money you contribute is tax deductible, which means paying less tax now and deferring paying tax until retirement, when you will likely be in a lower tax bracket. All investments grow tax-free until you withdraw them in retirement when they are taxed as income. Your yearly contribution limit is based on your income. For example, your RSP contribution limit for 2024 is 18% of the earned income you reported on your tax return in the previous year, or up to a maximum of $31,560. An RRSP can be opened by anyone under the age of 71 who's earned and reported income in a previous year. Right, contributions can be made until the age of 71. And at that point, you must close your RRSP and convert it into a registered retirement income fund, or RIP. Once your RRSP has been converted to a RIP, you are required to start making minimum withdrawals. Of course, you are also able to withdraw the money while it's an RRSP but you're not obligated to withdraw a minimum amount. In either case, the withdrawals are treated as income and could be subject to income tax. So you may be wondering, what's the difference between an RSP and TFSA? Both accounts can hold a variety of investment vehicles, such as mutual funds, ETFs, stocks, and bonds. The difference comes down to the time horizon and scope. RRSPs are intended for long-term retirement investing, whereas TFSAs can help you save for short or medium-term goals, like buying a car. That's why investors typically start by investing in a TFSA and maxing out their contribution limit before moving on to an RRSP. Shane, what if I have an even more specific goal, like saving for education? In that case, you can use an account called a Registered Education Savings Plan, or RSP. This account is perfect for saving for a child's post-secondary education. And the best part? The government helps out too, matching some of your contributions with grants. That's amazing. An RESP is typically opened by a parent for a child's post-secondary education journey, but it can be opened by anyone. Grandparents, relatives, friends, or even a stranger. You've got on the money. Investors can choose between an individual, family, or group RSP and all types of RSPs can hold a wide range of investment options. I personally completed my education a few years ago, and now I'm looking to purchase a home in a couple of years. Emma, can you talk about the First Home Savings Account? For sure. The First Home Savings Account, or FHSA, is designed to help Canadians save for their first home. You can contribute up to $8,000 per year, and the contributions are tax deductible, as with an RSP. Plus, any growth in the account is tax-free, and withdrawals are tax-free if you use the money to buy your first home. That's great. So it's like a mix between a TFSA and an RSP. Exactly. There are annual and lifetime contribution limits. You can contribute up to $8,000 annually with a lifetime limit of $40,000. 
And if you don't use the money for a home, you can transfer it to your RSP without any penalties. Sounds like the FHSA is an opportunity for more contribution room, more tax savings, and more opportunities for investment growth. So far, we talked about registered investment vehicles, TFSA accounts, RSP accounts, RIF accounts, RESP accounts, and FHSA accounts. Once you contribute the maximum limit in your registered plans, what other investment options do you have? That's where non-registered investment accounts come in. They can also be referred to as taxable accounts, open accounts, or cash accounts. These accounts have no contribution limits. And you can invest in anything you want, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, you name it. The key difference is that these accounts are not tax sheltered. This means that they're subject to full tax when income is earned on the investments, such as interest, dividends, and capital gains. Got it. So if I want to invest more money than the limits in a TFSA or RSP, I can go with the non-registered account. And since I can withdraw money anytime, they're versatile. But one thing you need to be cautious about with these accounts are the tax implications. So to wrap things up, we've covered a lot of grounds on the types of accounts available to Canadian investors. And you've certainly heard a lot of acronyms. Yes, let's do a quick recap. First, there's a tax-free savings account or TFSA. It's a great option because any income earned is tax-free and you can withdraw your money anytime without paying any taxes on it. Right, then we have the Registered Retirement Savings Plan or RSP. All contributions are tax deductible and the investments grow tax-free until you withdraw them in retirement and they're taxed as income. And don't forget about the Registered Education Savings Plan or RESP. It's a perfect opportunity for savings for post-secondary education with the bonus contributions from the government and tax-free growth. Absolutely. And we also talked about the First Home Savings Account, or FHSA. It combines the benefits of TFSAs and RRSPs, making it ideal for saving for your first home with tax-free growth and tax-deductible contributions. And for general investing, with more flexibility, there are non-registered accounts or open accounts they don't have contribution limits, but you do pay taxes on any income earned. Each account has its own benefits and is suited for different goals, whether it's saving for retirement, education, buying a home, or general investing. Perfect. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the different types of investment accounts in Canada. Make sure to continue following our videos to learn more about investing. Have a great day.